Hello, thanks for joining me for Life and Surround. Today's video is a bit unorthodox uh, for this channel. I'm not going to be talking about music with a surround or immersive mix per se, but about an immersive experience. This channel's point is really to celebrate being surrounded by life, and that includes being surrounded by love, being surrounded by art, friends, enjoyment, sharing those things. And recently, on July 2nd, in fact, my wife and I went out on a date and we went to see the Van Gogh immersive experience in nearby San Francisco. Side note, please forgive my perspiration. It is sweltering here in California. We're getting ready apparently for another wicked wildfire season. Also, please forgive me that I'll read some notes today. I tend not to, but I really don't want to miss any information about this very unique and worthwhile experience. The San Francisco version of the show is situated at the former Fillmore West, where I remember seeing They Might Be Giants back before Mrs. Baggins was Mrs. Baggins. In San Francisco, four walls of the square auditorium space and the floor are all used for projection. The ceiling is dedicated to the hanging of speakers and projectors. Given that the floor is a projection surface, you can interact and be a part of the show by casting your shadow. You can sit in one spot in a chair if you have a disability or on a rented cushion if you purchase that sort of ticket, merely on the floor, or you can opt to do what I did and walk around and take in many different angles. At times, the overall breadth of the projection is quite wide, nearly two full walls or half the space so depending on where you are, at least in San Francisco, it really can be quite impossible to take in every little detail of the show. You're going to be taking in the part of it that you're in front of at the time. You're not simply viewing stills of Van Gogh's work, but rather there are these sections of the show dedicated to his various series, such as his portraits, his pastoral phase, his flowers, and so on. Bits of his art have been extracted from various paintings, and they float in an animated way over backdrops from the same era. They morph from one image to another, they move around, they fade in and out. So you're not ever seeing entirely an intact version of his work. And in my opinion, it would help to orient you if you have some pre-knowledge of his work going into the show. Being a post-impressionist, this may not be your best first impression of his work. While the soundtrack is integrated into the show in terms of syncing and mood and style. It is not necessarily presented in surround or immersive. It may in fact be more or less mono. Even if the source is stereo, which I suspect because you can listen to the soundtrack on Spotify, and there it is obviously stereo, it's presented in more or less a mono fashion, sort of like if you're walking around at a mall or any open space and music is there somewhere, but you're not going to find a stereo sweet spot certainly not a surround sweet spot anywhere in the room. It's just meant to always be there wherever you choose to mill about. But since this entire experience is immersing you in the art of Van Gogh, I feel that the experience well qualifies for presenting it to you here. Though of course it would just take things to a whole new level if the sound were truly discreetly immersive. Now from what I understand, the location in France is up in the Antillon surround, 
So I encourage any French viewers to check that out and report back. Let us all know if the sound takes things to a new level. Cigarette smoking skeleton dude, sunflowers, and starry night all feature prominent attention in the show, much to my delight, those being three favorites of mine of his works. And I don't want to give away too many more spoilers, but uh, the starry night portion of the show is quite a treat. The San Francisco show runs around 40 minutes, though other locations run around an hour. In San Francisco, they're not really keeping account of the audience members, so if you wish, you can stay for multiple viewings. And I advise that because it really is hard to take in the whole show, and since it's pretty short, you could watch it two or three times and probably not experience diminishing returns by that point. Though my wife and I were tired and hungry, and we wanted to move on to some sustenance and libation. As alluded to in previous comments, the exact setup of the show differs from location to location, some of them being more sophisticated than others. I would call San Francisco a fairly stripped down version. You are led through sort of a maze of hallways that feature some Van Gogh hype and some puns like you are going the right way, spelled G-O-G-H-I-N-G and things like that. And then finally you find yourself just in the giant auditorium, which I presume was the former uh, music hall. And the show begins right after the credits of the previous show. So there are people filing in, filing out, moving all around. Uh, the people around you are certainly part of the experience. You are going to notice them for sure. Some locations feature a virtual reality face mask enhancement that you can walk around and enjoy. And some locations are more sophisticated with their room setup, their style of projections, like they may have pillars in the middle of the room that receive projections and twist them around. San Francisco, uh, the day that I went was a little bit of a bummer because this podium that's raised in the middle of the room was off limits. And so really all it did was break up the space. You couldn't climb the staircase and go up there and get kind of a taller view. So if any of you watching uh, know that it's reopened, let me know because I might actually go back and check that out. I hope you've enjoyed this and more importantly, I hope that you go and enjoy the Van Gogh immersive experience. Posthumously, Van Gogh became one of the most profound inspirations on Western art, and I don't think his impact can be overstated. His tragic energy coming through in his palette knife strokes, it's really an exquisite and unique thing to absorb and to let ruminate about inside your soul. And this experience definitely helps draw you in to the sad beauty that is Vincent Van Gogh. Until next time, my loved ones, live life in surround.